What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I've got a video that's kind of um, subsequent to the last one I did for the tuning, how to tune. Uh, this one is going to be my top five performance mods. Basically, if someone told me, here's a brand new WRX, you're only allowed to do five mods to it, and that's it. Um, these are my choices. And by performance, I do mean suspension as well. It's not just engine performance. So, let's get started. Four, three, two, one. You'll never have the sacred stone. <laughs> oh, this new crazy mother... So this is not in any particular order. For the first one, we're gonna begin with the NVIDIA Q300 Cadded Turbo Back Exhaust. This is my preference. I like Cadded exhaust, Cadded J-pipes in particular, just because I used to have a Catalyst on my GTI that I drove for about 30,000 miles like that. I didn't realize how bad it was or how much attention it got until I drove behind my friend's car, which also had a Catalyst uh, downpipe at the time. And it was terrible. My eyes were like watering, and I'm not even exaggerating. Um, you don't realize it until you drive behind someone like that. Um, and not just that, it, it started to become a little annoying. Uh, it was too loud. Uh, coming at stoplights or off on off ramps, and just come to a stop, the smell just hits you like a truck. So, taking that into consideration, Nvidia is my favorite one. The Q300 is my favorite cat bag. I've tried, if you go back in my channel, I've tried four different catbacks. Uh, I sold on Nvidia because it had the best tone for me. It was the quietest and it's still not even that quiet. Uh, I wanted something a little understated. And it just, it's overall very stealth. You don't get as much attention from cops. So it's a win for me. Uh, it, I know the ETS sells their quiet exhaust. I was a little uh, hesitant on that one because I hear even though it says quiet exhaust, it's pretty darn loud still. Second one's gonna have to be the Grim Speed 3 port electronic boost control solenoid. I've talked about this one before in my past videos. Uh, it's one of the, it's pretty much a safety feature when you're tuning and it helps keep it nice, steady, linear boost curve. So you can always know how much PSI, how much boost you're getting when you mat it. Uh, you don't have to worry about having any over boosting issues. Uh, it's overall a great mod to have um, in your arsenal. So. As for number three, I didn't pick a particular brand for this one. Um, it's gonna be top mount intercooler or front mount intercooler, depending on your power goals. If you're gonna go over 400 horsepower, go with the front mount. Anything below that, you really don't need one. Uh, a good top mount would do just as fine. I have the uh, Turbo XS, which I'll have some features coming up right now to show you. Uh, and it did great on the dyno. It, my, dime, my Pro Tuner had no complaints about it. It made some consistent power. Um, and intake air temperatures are really, really good when you're getting on it. Air is blowing through the foot scoop, so I can't complain. It is also, like I said, a safety feature or something good to have when it gets really hot in your area because hot air, hot charged air, is usually a recipe for a knock, which never ends well, as we all know. One more thing to note about the top mount intercooler. It was only after I installed the top mount intercooler and got retuned was when I real when I noticed most of that dead spot after 5,000 RPM was gone. That was my my experience. It could be different for anyone. I could just be in the pro tune itself. Who knows? But it's worth mentioning. Number four. I put the Subaru STI Group N transmission mount, and I've talked about this one before in one of my previous videos. I think it was my top five favorite mods. I believe, due to the issues that are plaguing this car with the pitch mount uh, brace that snaps, that tends to snap even on stock cars, it doesn't really matter what power level you're at. Uh, this is one mod that I believe would prevent it and keeps the transmission and the engine from moving back under hard acceleration, keeping the tension away from that mount so that it doesn't crack. Otherwise what we've seen is that the welds start to crack and the whole thing just shears right off, which is no good. And then you're gonna have to deal with super trying to get it covered under warranty. I think there is a revised part, but they're not gonna do it for you unless it's broken. 
and if you're modded, good luck. So, but Perrin does sell a brace for that, just to know. So group and transmission mount, I think it's the best blend between um, a very stiff mount and comfort because you don't notice any extra vibrations. You do get a little bit of a different tone or noise. You do hear the transmission a little more, but I've gotten used to it and I don't even hear it anymore. It also improves your shifting feel. Your shifts are a lot more direct uh, when you're going wide open throttle. One, two, it's all direct. Transmission doesn't move and it stays in its place. So that's always good. Last but not least, I have the Eibach front and rear sway bars. Now, it would be top six if I were to add the carboy and links. That's up to you. I do recommend you do those roll along with it, but you don't have to. Um, if you've seen my uh, sway bar video, I show the difference between the carboy and links and the stock and links. It's a big difference. But that's besides the point. So, oh, got a little bit of LA traffic here. If I was given a car that I had a completely stock suspension, I think the only thing, and I had to do only one thing there, it would have to be the sway bars because they're gonna make the biggest difference. Um, the stock springs and shock combo is already good as is. Just adding the sway bar is gonna eliminate pretty much all the bo body roll that you had left over anyway. So it's a really good modification. I, it's one of my favorites. Even if you want, you can get away with just doing the rear sway bar, which is gonna give you that feeling of oversteer. Um, through corners so that's gonna improve your handling quite a bit for the price it's a really good bang for your buck mod I think um, anyone you ask it speaks for themselves it's the one suspension mod that you notice the most uh, during cornering or handling it it makes a drastic difference even though it's just a bar it makes a big difference so guys that is my top five performance mods um, this is kind of branching off of my how to tune or tuning 101 video uh, where I briefly touched up, up on some of these things. Uh, on my top five mods video, I was more of a general video for just everyone if you're not into mods. If, if you're not into performance mods, if you just want to do visuals or whatever, and let me shut this thing now. So, if you guys like the video, make sure you comment. If you have any questions, make sure you ask. I'll be happy to answer them. I try to answer every comment I get as best as I can. Um, so if I haven't answered any of your questions, I will get to it, don't worry. I always look through them. And subscribe for future videos. I got some DIY installs coming up, um, driving videos and all sorts of stuff planned. Um, and when I hit 1,000 subscribers, I plan to do a little bit of a giveaway. I haven't decided what yet, but it'll be worth your while. So make sure to subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time. Peace out.